Welcome back to the program. Safe as houses. It's a term we're all pretty familiar with. Real estate's viewed as much a safer investment than the volatile stock market. Its steady solid gains are in stark contrast to the fluctuations in equity markets. But like all investments, the key to realising value on property is timing. Now for the first time there's a book that details and explains the cyclical nature of real estate. Phil Anderson's the author of The Secret Life of Real Estate in which he details how and why the cycles work and explains why it's destined to keep repeating. He spoke with James Dagger Nixon. Well, the, the global economic downturn was caused actually by the US real estate market um, collapsing. And uh, as I report in the book, there is a history of that having happened. And if you trace US history back to when the US federal government first started allowing its citizens to purchase the land back to 1800, you can see when you do the history, there's a very clear 18-year cycle of US real estate turning downwards in that succession. So if you trace the history, you've got 1818, 1836, 1854, 1873, 1893, 1908, 1926, and then you had the Second World War intervene, but after that, US land price lowed in 1955, and since then it has been exactly 18-year um, cyclical rhythm we had a top with uh, US real estate trusts in 1969, 14 years up. Uh, then we had four down as part of the 18 year sequence into 1973. We had another 14 years up into 1986, 87, four years down into 1991. And we've just had another sequence of 18 years, 14 years up. For, and we will get another four years down from when US real estate topped out in 2005, 2006. And real estate's going to bottom in 2010 in the US. A lot of economists and so-called experts said that they couldn't foresee this global economic downturn occurring. It did come as a surprise and something of a generational, once in a generation occurrence. You say that's not the case. The interesting thing about the research and the history I've done is that every, clearly every cycle doesn't happen the same way. Otherwise, if it did, we'd all see it and we'd all act out and it wouldn't come to, wouldn't come to fruition. So every cycle is different. But what I noticed in, in my historical studies, and I detailed in the book, there always seems to be something that comes along about 13 or 14 years in from the bottom that catches everybody by surprise. The thing is, though, it's always finance related. And it's where banks have been creating their credit based upon the rental value of the land. The, credit, the, the creation of the credit gets right out of hand. Then, for some reason, whatever it is, we get the turn the amount of credit that the bank created on the land value, that the land value starts to decline below the levels of the loans outstanding, and that puts enormous pressure on the banks. This has been happening in a regular fashion since 1800 in the United States. Reading through the book, one of the, the major issues seem to be Ricardo's law of rent. Can you give us an idea of just what it is and, and how it contributes to the issue of this, this property cycle? This is some interesting stuff with the, the uh, Ricardo's law of rent. It is something that economists today completely ignore. They, they don't factor in uh, the, uh, the, the, the rent of land. But real estate investors and most traders uh, seem to, or many of us seem to understand it intrinsically. It, we all know that a house will cost the same to build whether you build it in Melbourne or Sydney or whether you build it right on the outskirts of a, a, in a country town. But to buy that house, it's going to cost you more to buy the house in inner Sydney or inner Melbourne than it will in that country town. That difference in the purchase price of the house is the locational value. In other words, the land value. And the locational value of living somewhere is built into the land price. And Ricardo explained this uh, in about 1810 or so uh, with his um, law of economic rent. And if investors and real estate people really want to understand the cycle, it's David Ricardo that they, that they, they should understand. I suppose the big question then is where are we now? When do you think we're likely to see some sort of a rebound? I don't get into the thoughts of when I think that might happen. I allow the market to dictate when that will, when that will occur. And that's reasonably easy to read. The stock markets always price in the effects of the real estate downturn before real estate because obviously the stock market is more uh, quicker in its adjustments. You can buy and sell much quicker. Real estate should bottom in the US in 2010. In fact, it will, not should, it will. The, the place where that gets priced in first is in the stock market. We will know 
pretty much how that forecast and whether it's on track or not. We'll know by the next low that the US stock market makes. So we're, we can be expecting another low in the US stock market sometime early next year. If that low is lower than the low we've had this year in March, then there's more pain to go for the US. But if the low that will eventually come along early next year, if that is a higher low than we've had in March of this year, then that's the stock market telling you that the worst is over because the professionals are backing that opinion with their money. So I don't need to give an opinion on that. The market will eventually tell us. The common perception is that property investment has little risk. Is that not the case? If you look really, really long term, 50, 100 years, you, you really, you, you, you can't do too badly with property. However, if you buy into property precisely at the wrong time, which is at the peak of the, these regular cycles, then it will take you much, much longer to recover your initial investment. So from the point of view of a timing, uh, there, there are clearly cycles in the economy. If you're prepared to follow uh, the 18-year property clock that I've developed, there are clearly better times than others in which to do your buying. And that's just what, I, that's just what history clearly shows. The book is very detailed, obviously, as you've mentioned, going into you know, historical data and so forth. Who is it aimed at? I really, to, to be honest, I, I really didn't write the book to be aimed at anybody. I, I wrote the book simply to get it out of my head. Um, the book had been on the website for about, almost about the past, the past 10 years. And I had a number of subscribers say to me over between 2003, 2004, so Phil, you should document this sort of stuff because it's, uh, it's been quite useful for, for all of them. And they, they got back to me and said, well, perhaps you should put it out as a book. It wasn't something I'd really thought about. And then it, when they told me that, I thought, yeah, it's probably a good idea. But it, the stuff had been in my head for so long, I just simply had to get it out so that I could free my head to think about something else. And so that's what I've done, really. Where does the interest, the passion for this topic come from? Yes, um, this might be a bit sad, but when I was 12, I was collecting newspaper cuttings about business cycles rather than football cards. <laughs> uh, it is, yes, it is something I'm interested in. I believe that you can forecast the future. Now, when I say that, do I know what's going to happen, James, to you tomorrow? Absolutely not. I've got no idea. But as regards the general picture of the economy, in a long-term time frame, talking about months and years, there is a rhythm. It's based on, the, on Ricardo's law of rent, and you can reasonably well forecast that in a longer-term scenario. And I've, that's what I documented in the book. And if you study the historical uh, record of that, it will repeat because the repeat is going to be based on that same economic law of rent. Nothing has changed. The, the, the governments around the world, they've just reinstituted exactly the same systems. So we are going to get another repeat. It, it's, it's, it's absolutely certain.